Welcome back to the show. We're talking about the civil war in South Sudan where thousands have died and where over two million people are at risk of severe hunger. Joining me now is Garang De Ing Akuang. He is South Sudan's ambassador to the United States. Ambassador, thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. I appreciate of having me on your show. You're welcome, sir. This has been a devastating war for your very young country. What can you tell us about casualty levels and the number of people who've been displaced or have had to flee? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, we, regret, we regret that the, the country has uh, gone into civil war since 2013. And we, we recognize as a government that a lot of people have been uh, killed mistakenly. Uh, a lot of people have been displaced in the UN camps and in the neighboring country and the uh, countries and inside the country. So uh, it is uh, devastating and uh, we are working with the international community to rectify the situation. What is the humanitarian situation in the country right now? You know, as we've been reporting, something like two million people are in dire need. I mean, how bad is the situation? Yeah, it is, it is bad, but it is not a grave situation. Uh, the international community are doing uh, the best uh, they could uh, to help the people of South Sudan. And the government also is doing its part in uh, contributing into the alleviation of the suffering of our people. Uh, indeed, uh, thousands have been displaced, uh, uh, but uh, the, 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 the situation is not uh, that grave. Right, so we have the humanit you know, humanitarian situation. As you say, the international community is helping out there. But there's also been quite a, a lot of frustration being expressed by the international community because there hasn't been any kind of a political solution to this. There hasn't been a peace deal. There's been no agreement yet. There's talk of sanctions. What is going on? Yeah, it is uh, true that there is frustration in the international community arena because this is a conflict that is costing life and uh, livelihood of the people. And, uh, and everybody, including the government, wants this conflict to come to an end. And uh, we know that the resources, uh, wherever they, they come from, are being depleted. They are, no, they are not enough for everybody, even from the, uh, from the government side. So the war is, is costing life and, 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 and resources. That is uh, number one. Number two, uh, the conflict has gone on for a long time, but the government has tried to, to give it a priority uh, with concessions to, to the rebels, and, uh, but the rebels are not heading the call. Uh, from time to time, they're shifting the goalposts, as people say. Uh, uh, they move uh, around, we, they, we give concessions uh, another after another, and then they're still uh, intransigent not to give in to, to the peace. But we are committed to negotiating peace with the rebels uh, with the help of the international community, uh, being uh, in the body of the African Union, the, the IGAD, the, the Troika, including the United States and even Chinese uh, are involved in this uh, 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 tremendous uh, process to try to bring peace to South Sudan. Right, there have been several rounds of talks in Ethiopia. It hasn't resulted in a peace deal. What are the sticking points here? Yes, there, uh, there are a lot of uh, issues on, on the table. Uh, especially from the side of the rebels that are proposing uh, two arms in the transition period. Uh, that is uh, the period that uh, uh, the transitional government is going to be formed. They are also asking for the position of the first vice president, a position that was left by Dr. Yigmasha. They are asking for power sharing 50-50 with the government, irrespective of, who, of the other parties. They are asking uh, uh, debts to be paid, uh, and, and I don't know uh, in the world where the rebels can incur debts and then are paid by the people of that country. They are asking for the parliament to be increased. But in all these areas, the government gave a lot of concessions. You know, getting back to the situation concerning the conflict, we just talked with Forrest Whitaker, who is UNESCO Special Envoy to South Sudan. He said something, one of the developments that really concerns him is the recruitment of children as soldiers here. Uh, I mean, what can the country do to prevent children fighting and dying in this conflict? I think the country has, uh, has, done, has done a lot. The government in the past few months has uh, uh, released uh, uh, a lot of children from the, from the ranks of the, of the, of the arms, and, and, and you all are aware that 3,000 were released uh, some few months, uh, months back and are now integrated into to the communities. And the government wants to make sure that there is no child uh, is recruited uh, in, in the army. We are abide by all the conventions that uh, protect the, the rights of the, of the children. 
But if there are instances that are done by individuals or by groups, uh, the government regrets those individuals, and people will be held accountable for those acts. Now, as you pointed out, the international community is involved helping with the humanitarian situation there, also helping at a political level, trying to get a peace deal there. What would you like to see more done by the international community? What more would you like to see? Yes, the mediation has, uh, has gone on for uh, more than uh, one year in, in, in Addis Ababa, uh, supervised by the IGAD and then with the contribution of the Troika, United States and China. Uh, but uh, the mechanism that has been there uh, trying to resolve the situation maybe is uh, need to be reinforced. Uh, and IGAD has a lot of experience uh, in, in the negotiations. Uh, the IGAD was the one uh, body that brought the CPA uh, with the contribution of, of others. So IGAD has what it takes to bring peace to South Sudan. So what, uh, what is the IGAD? Can you explain that to us? IGAD is an intergovernmental authority on, uh, uh, for the digital community for, for East, uh, Eastern African countries. So this is the, 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 the body that contributed to bringing peace in, in Sudan uh, in, in 2005. And this body is now doing its best. And we recognize the role of IGAD. We recognize the role of other parties that are contributing to bringing peace to South Sudan. Uh, but now there is a talk in, uh, in, uh, in Addis and elsewhere, in other capitals, that IGAD need to be reinforced. And we welcome anybody that can uh, prevail on, on the rebels to accept peace. Now, you've just arrived in Washington. You've been here for just over a month as ambassador for South Sudan. You've met with President Obama. What was his message to you? Yeah, the president uh, welcomed me very, very much, and he expressed his uh, willingness and desire to work with me to, uh, to help the, the, the President Kiir and, uh, and, uh, and other leaders in South Sudan to bring peace in South Sudan. He is uh, echoed that uh, enough blood has been shed in South Sudan, and therefore uh, South Sudan is need to arise uh, above uh, the personal interests and, and then bring, uh, work very hard to bring peace in South Sudan. I uh, also uh, gave him a message from uh, my president that he, he also uh, appreciated the role played by President Obama and his administration in trying to support people of South Sudan and to bring peace to South Sudan. And he's ready to work with President Obama and the people of the United States, including the Congress, uh, to bring peace, uh, lasting peace to South Sudan. Now, the United Nations, as I mentioned, has threatened sanctions against the leaders of your country. What's the latest on that? Yeah, we are all aware that the, the resolution uh, was passed, uh, and this resolution was sponsored by our friends in the United States. Uh, but we regret uh, that the uh, resolution was passed uh, threatening sanctions to South Sudan. But this is the framework, uh, uh, and we are uh, uh, reaching out to our friends in, uh, in the Security Council and the AU. Uh, to inform that sanctions will never solve the problem in South Sudan. In the state, it will aggravate the problem. And I think, and it is my own assessment, that because of the sanctions that were imposed while people were negotiating, the negotiation, negotiations failed because rebels perceived that sanctions would work in their favor. And this is the, 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 the message that we want to send to the international community, that further, further sanctions will not uh, solve the problem. In the state, it will aggravate the problem more. So we, we think that uh, dialogue and, uh, and, uh, and engagement with both parties, the warring parties, the government and the rebels, that is, will yield more fruits. And, uh, and I would like to take this opportunity that uh, uh, other countries that are, are very important uh, for South Sudanese, like sh China and Russia and US and uh, European Union and beyond should also uh, prevail on, on the rebels and bring peace because everybody is losing in that region. The, 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 the neighboring countries are, using, uh, are losing because South Sudan used to be uh, a very good market for uh, some of these countries in terms of export and in import. Uh, China is uh, the biggest investor in South Sudan and uh, also India, Malaysia, these are investors in South Sudan. So as long as the con conflict continues, these people might lose their investment in South Sudan. And therefore, we, uh, we also ask them uh, to, to contribute uh, to bringing peace to South Sudan. You talk of uh, dialogue and engagement. Uh, does, does the leader, Salva Kiir, ever engage in a direct conversation with the opposition leader, 
React Michelle? Do they talk directly to each other? I, they, they, I think they, they talk several times. And uh, President Salva has been a humble person and he's a reconciliatory person and he has uh, met the, the Riyang Mashar uh, several times. But the uh, Riyang Mashar has a personal ambition. So he will not serve the community that he wants to protect or to serve. Uh, he is uh, asking for the first vice president and this is the position that he left when he rebelled. And the current vice pre first vice president was the one who gave him the opportunity when he came back uh, from Khartoum in 2002. So this has been a, uh, a trend and, and an ideology of Dr. Yang Mashar that wanting to be a president by any means, but not by democratic uh, process. And if he wants to be a president of South Sudan, let, uh, let him and uh, President Key be subjected to a popular vote. And then uh, people will decide whether uh, if people like his program, then uh, there is no way that he, nobody can uh, accept him. But he, he, he tries to capture it by force. And, uh, that one South Sudanese people will not accept because there is a constitution, there is a democratic process, there are all institutions in South Sudan, democratic institutions in South Sudan that will not uh, be sidelined by one person and that is trying to take uh, power by force, but he's, he's derailing the peace process because he's negotiating himself in, not, 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 not the people that he claims to represent. Ambassador, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah. And that's all we have time for, but the conversation continues online. Join us on CCTV America's Facebook page to comment on this or any other show or chat with us on Twitter at CCTV underscore America. I'm Arnold Naidu in Washington, D.C. Thanks for watching.